During the original run of Space, 1999, the science fiction series generated a number of media tie-ins, including novelizations, original novels, comic books and audio dramas. Due to the series' ongoing cult following, new tie-ins continue to be released to this day. Books Topic: 1970s novels and novelizations In the mid-1970s, a number of books were published by both American Pocket Books and British Futura publishers, consisting primarily of novelizations of space, 1999 episodes. These releases, mainly paperback, were supplemented by 16-page photo sections year 1 and 2 in the United States, year 2 only in the United Kingdom, which comprised black and white stills from the episodes. Original novels, without photo section, also formed a part of the series. Many of the books were also translated for release in overseas markets, such as Germany, Turkey and Japan. <laughs> English language releases Topic. Year One Breakaway by E. C. Tubb. Novelization of Breakaway. Matter of Life and Death. Ring Around the Moon. And Black Sun. Using the scripted stories and plot points as a springboard, Tubb weaves the four installments into one continuous and still recognizable narrative. Fans expecting a word by word adaptation will be disappointed. Characterization is strong, especially among the three leads. Tubb identifies their personal loneliness and reasons for wanting to retreat from Earth to the safety of the Moon. Tubb also injects a great deal of science into the narrative, attempting to explain many of the inexplicable events in the language of 1970s scientific knowledge. He depicts the mental adjustment of the Alphans to a hazardous existence in deep space, with several personnel reportedly going mad or committing suicide, and their preparations to survive the voyage by adapting Moonbase Alpha's physical facilities. Significant changes include, 1 Commissioner Simmons is a casualty of the breakaway. A bad fall and the subsequent crushing G-forces leave him dead from a severe skull fracture. 2 Meta and Terra Nova are made the same planet, lending credence to Commander John Koenig's optimism at the end of breakaway. That Meta holds hope for the future. 3. Helena Russell's experience of the destruction of Terra Nova and the Reconnaissance Party and its subsequent magical reversal is given the possible explanation of being a bad trip induced by hallucinogenic compounds in the native fruit that she samples. 4. Triton is not another planet light years from Earth, but the moon of Neptune gone missing in this story. 5. Professor Victor Bergman creates the anti gravity force field in Ring Around the Moon. To outwit the Tritonians, based on information obtained from the explosions at disposal areas 1 and 2, then adapts it to shield Alpha for the Black Sun segment. 6. The surviving Eagle transporter cannot escape the gravitational pull of the Black Sun, so Carter opts to follow the Moon. 7. David Carno is present in the Breakaway portion of the novel, while no mention is made of Benjamin Alma. Moon Odyssey by John Rankin. Novelization of Alpha Child. The Last Sunset. Voyages Return, and Another Time, Another Place. Rankin employs a much more conservative approach to the novel, with a faithful script to prose adaption of the four episode. Any linking of the four segments is minimal and does not alter events. Thankfully, no explanations are offered for the mysterious and mind blowing events that the Alphans experience. Rankin's style is clean and fast paced and, while maintaining character integrity, portrays the regulars as more down to earth, regular people in contrast to Tubbs' uber intelligent, more tension ridden interpretation. Changes from established episodes are few and usually because they were present in the final shooting scripts and reflective of last minute alterations. 1. Sue Crawford was originally named Cynthia Crawford. 2. Jarak and Rena's pursuers from home appeared in a fleet of six ships identical to theirs rather than one large warship. 3. The conclusion of the Biological Clock. Dialogue between Sandra Benes and Paul Morrow in The Last Sunset. Excised from the final print is restored. Sandra. Do you know what sound I miss most in the silence of space? Paul. Bird song. And now, before the kiss, Sandra. The sound of children. The Space Guardians by Brian Ball. Novelization of Missing Link. Force of Life. And Guardian of Piri. This novel's style is a hybrid of the first two, a continuous interlinking novel that can veer from the on-screen narrative, but with large portions adapted verbatim. Ball is much more liberal with the Alphans and their portrayals, while consistent within the novel, do not match up with the characterizations created on-screen. 
The protagonist is Commander Koenig, who is put through a tortured learning curve in these three segments. Alpha is depicted as a very realistic and interactive community. Changes are made both for creative and practical reasons. One, the reconnaissance mission in Missing Link was not to explore the Crichton solar system, but searching for a detected mineral deposit on the Moon's surface. This was also depicted in the final shooting script. Two, Rans Fo Bergman deceives Koenig for an extended time, revealing the sensor reading of the mineral deposit was actually that of a buried alien spacecraft boasting an interstellar propulsion system. During a visit to the excavated craft, he tries to tempt Koenig into abandoning the Alphans and using the ship to get the two of them home. 3. Koenig's love for Vanna borders on epic and persists throughout the novel. In the Force of Life chapters, memories of Vanna produce a fugue like grief, causing him to withdraw from the normal routine and giving him crippling migraines. In Guardian of Piri, he has come to terms with this, but its persisting memory gives Koenig the strength of will to resist the influence of the Guardian. 4. After Zeno, the moon drifts out of the galaxy, encountering the heat-absorbing life force and the isolated Pyrian solar system in the intergalactic void. 5. Piri alternates in appearance between the reality of a desert wasteland and the Guardian's vision of a lush paradise garden. Collision Course by E.C. Tubb. Novelization of Collision Course, The Full Circle, End of Eternity, and Death's Other Dominion. Tubb's second effort is much the same as his breakaway. All four tales are blended into a single narrative, with the scientific explanations added for Operation Shockwave, the sudden appearance and ultimate fate of Athereir, the Redden personal time warp and the means of Balor's immortality. He also debunks the normal complaint of Critics of Space, 1999 by having Athereir, Retha, the Progron asteroid and Ultima Thule present in the same solar system. The stories bear a closer resemblance to their respective episodes with more on-screen action and dialogue represented. An interesting passage giving insight into the daily life on Alpha is added. Koenig converses with the head of nutrition in a mess hall, mentioning the poor flavor of the morning meal. The subordinate explains that an algae strain was contaminated, but used regardless to create the simulated butter, eggs, and coffee. The alternative was to scrap the lot and provide survival rations. Changes made include 1. Retha being revealed from behind Atheria after its disappearance and proposed as a possible parting gift from ARRA. 2. The Alphans not attempting to destroy Balor's asteroid at the close of the story. Its power of indestructibility had been demonstrated at the top of this segment by an almost organic regrowth potential, rather than a magical post-destructive reappearance. 3. Captain Alan Carter being attacked by the hostile wildlife of Ultima Thule just as he locates the eagle during the whiteout. Lunar attack by John Rankin. Novelization of War Games. The Troubled Spirit. The Last Enemy. And Space Brain. Rankin's second outing is a solid novelization in the same spirit as his first, and the four stories remain faithful to their script origins. His prose style remains brisk, but includes more descriptive passages as if he had viewed these stories before getting down to writing. The attack theme is carried through all four stories, with three depicting assaults on Alpha from external forces and a fourth from within the mind of one of their own. Teleplay purists will note more than a few discrepancies as The Last Enemy and Space Brain were extensively reworked after completion of the principal photography. Changes include, 1 the music program in The Troubled Spirit is a string quartet led by Bergman. 2. In The Last Enemy, Dione receives reports from a male Bethan regarding the status of the Wandering Moon. 3. None of the action on board Dione's battleship Satasius appears, as this was scripted and filmed after the fact as filler for this severely underrunning episode. The whole Men v. Women Idea is mostly lost without Dione's glamour girl crew. 4. The ending of The Last Enemy is that of the unrevised shooting script. The sequence with the two planets both threatening Alpha with destruction over Koenig's provision of coordinates for Satasius does not occur, nor does his desperate gambit to dispose of Dione and company. Koenig simply transmits the coordinates of the Bethan gunship to Talos on Delta, who immediately sends a missile strike to destroy it. 5. In Space Brain the lost fight between Carter and Kelly excised from the final cut is restored where a brain-controlled Kelly attempts to send the eagle into the center of the brain. 6. The ending of Space Brain is that of the unrevised shooting script. Koenig has a last-minute epiphany, if the antibodies are intentionally allowed into the Alpha complex, they cannot crush it, and orders all airlocks opened. The brain survives intact, gently deflecting the moon from its collision course. Astral Quest by John Rankin. Novelization of the Infernal Machine, Mission of the Darians, Dragon's Domain, and The Testament of Arcadia. 
Rankin maintains his high-quality interpretation of the series with the last four stories of Year One, displaying a prose style that is a bit more sophisticated than his previous outings. However, he loses a bit of credibility when he has the elegant and refined Benes utter the expletive, Holy cow! at the sight of Gwent. He weaves the four segments together with a continuing story of Koenig and Bergman discussing the first steps of establishing a viable civilization when they eventually settle on a planet. The quest theme is explored through Gwent's search for identity, the Darian's ambitions for a future, Jim Calder's quest for redemption and the culmination of the destiny that the unknown forces holds in store for the Alphans. Changes this time a few. 1. Morrow is present in The Infernal Machine. 2. The mutants are referred to by the Darian survivor tribe as Mutes. 3. The Tony Cellini and Monique Bouchier characters are known as Jim Calder and Olga Vishenskia, as they were in the final shooting script. Alien Seed by E. C. Tubb, original novel. Android Planet by John Rankin, original novel. Rogue Planet by E. C. Tubb, original novel. Phoenix of Megaron by John Rankin, original novel, U.S. only. Earthfall by E. C. Tubb, original novel, U.K. only. Notable in that it concludes the Space 1999 Odyssey and features the descendants of the Alphans returning to Earth. Earthbound is the only Year One episode not included in this series of novelizations. Topic Year Two. Planets of Peril by Michael Butterworth. Novelization of The Metamorph, The A.B. Chrysalis, The Rules of Luton, and New Adam, New Eve. The new series receives a new style of writing. Butterworth has a complicated prose style, heavy with descriptive passages and character insights. The characters sometimes speak and behave melodramatically. Great license is taken with the scripts and major changes are made in these stories to suit their assembly into one consistent plotline. Only some of this can be attributed to his being supplied with draft scripts. Butterworth acknowledges the never-mentioned backstory that the Alphans have relocated underground. Major changes include, 1 the use of the character names Simon Hayes, Mark McInlock and Jameson later revised to Tony Verdesky, Alan Carter and Petroff as they appeared in the final draft of The Metamorph. In a schizophrenic attempt to accommodate different drafts of the script, Butterworth has Hayes accompany Koenig to Psycon and sometimes forgetting that he is there while Verdesky is left in command of Moonbase Alpha. After the events of The Metamorph, McInlock would take a well-deserved rest, and Alan Carter becomes the main pilot. Two. The mineral that would send the Alphans to Psycon is named Terranium as it was also called in the final shooting script. Terranium is described as a radioactive metal that had replaced plutonium as fuel for the nuclear reactors due to its significantly higher potency and harmless by-products. 3. In The A.B. Chrysalis, the shockwaves threaten the moon directly after the destruction of Psycon. Maya accompanies the reconnaissance party to their planet of origin, not as an official crew member, but at Helena's request to give the girl refugee something to do to keep her from grieving over her losses. With Maya unfamiliar to the Alphans, Butterworth actually makes sense of the filler where Koenig and Carter marvel over her extraordinary ability of mental arithmetic. 4. Verdesky replaces Koenig on the Luton survey mission with Maya, in an attempt to force these characters together and accelerate their romance. 5. Maya becomes the newly appointed scientific officer with a desk in command center in New Adam, New Eve. 6. Benes and Yasko appear in command center together on several occasions. Mind Breaks of Space by J. Jeff Jones and Michael Butterworth. Novelization of Brian the Brain, The Mark of Archanon, Catacombs of the Moon, and One Moment of Humanity. Sources indicate Jones wrote the majority of the book. The four stories are again combined into a single narrative and a search for Terranium is introduced. This would become a constant presence in the Butterworth novels, making the reader wonder why the Alphans designed their power source to be dependent on such a universally rare substance. Brian the Brain's interference with Alpha's main computer would cause the reactors to use too much too quickly. Terranium would be the cause of the mining operations seen in The Mark of Archanon and Catacombs of the Moon. The surface explosions caused by the hydrogen heat storm would split open a rill on the lunar surface and expose a large vein of the valuable mineral. Butterworth also has Myers' transformations feature more distinctively alien creatures rather than terrestrial animals, addressing the complaints of both Catherine Shell and the fans. Changes include, 1 Koenig's plan to break Brian's mind involves he, Helena and Maya confusing the brain by each clamoring to provide it with maintenance, then Maya transforms into Captain Michael to send it over the edge. This was from an earlier draft script. 2 Maya transforms into a bipedal headless bat creature to search for the fugitive Osgoods in the pitch-black catacombs. 3 
The hydrogen heat storm is a force of nature only and there is no speculation as to its possible sentience. 4. The first appearance of San as a male Indian operative rather than Sandra Benes going by a new nickname. The Space Jackers by Michael Butterworth. Novelization of Seed of Destruction, A Matter of Balance, The Exiles, and The Beta Cloud. Butterworth returns as solo author of this novel. The stories are more delineated and match their on screen counterparts, except for The Beta Cloud. The hunt for Terranium continues as Kantar and Zova exhaust Moonbase's supply using their matter transmitter jury rigged from the life support system, and, by the end of the novel, it is stated that Alpha has only enough power for one more day. His use of imaginative alien forms for the Maya transformations continues with her selection to fight the Cloud Robot, a two headed, fire breathing dragon beast with razor like forearms. Changes include, one, botanist Shermin's last name is Goodwood, and he is only 18 at the time, having been trapped on the runaway moon as a teenager during an ill-timed holiday. 2. Hayes makes another appearance the first half of The Exiles. The shooting script used his name till this point. He remains in command center with Koenig when Verdesky and Meyer are dispatched to life support to check on Kantar and Zova's progress. He is not mentioned again. 3. The male Indian, San, makes another appearance, substituting at the station normally occupied by Benes. 4. In The Beta Cloud, major changes are made to the narrative, not the least of which is the disappearance of all the filler scenes added to this severely underrunning episode. Maya is severely injured during her initial battle with the Cloud's robot and remains in medical center for much of the story, and a recovering Carter joins Versusky and Fraser in their attempts to repel the invader. Maya's epiphany about the robot's true nature is given to her by Ben Vincent with an offhand remark, If Tony and Alan can't stop that runaway robot, no one can. Maya then inexplicably escapes from the locked medical center to join the three men for the final showdown at life support, sustained by stimulants and pain-killing drugs. There is no happy ending as they realize that the aforementioned power dilemma will mean the end of Alpha. As an aside, Mackinlock is mentioned as the ill-fated pilot of Eagle 6, effectively writing the character out of the series. The Psychomorph by Michael Butterworth. Novelization of The Lambda Factor and The Bringers of Wonder, Part 1 and the Bringers of Wonder, Part 2. Butterworth's fourth outing presents a behind-the-scenes manipulator, a million-mile-wide sentient space amoeba. The amoeba has existed for billions of years and sustains itself on the radiation of the stars it absorbs. Now senile and powerless, its once massive body shrunken and dying, it must receive a massive influx of radiation to survive. The arrival of the traveling moon gives it its last chance and it attempts by any means to deceive the Alphans into causing a thermonuclear explosion to regenerate itself. The Terranium Crisis narrative from the end of the Space Jackers is picked up with Alpha poised on the brink of oblivion. With only hours to go, mild-mannered mining engineer Carl Renton, under the influence of the amoeba's lambda waves, has his inner desire for success realized as he is given the courage to enter an unsafe tunnel and discovers a major Terranium deposit. Only minor changes are made to the teleplays. One, Sally Martin is another unfortunate teen trapped on the runaway moon when visiting her favorite uncle at the age of 15. 2. Carl Renton and his bully named Harry Garth shoot craps rather than play their complicated electronic gambling device. 3. Carolyn Powell is influenced by the amoeba to order the meltdown of the alpha nuclear reactors when she takes over command center. 4. San switches sex and is now portrayed as female due to appearance of fiancé, Peter Rockwell. 5. The jellyfish aliens are no longer the primary antagonists, but psychically synthesized pawns of the non-corporeal space amoeba. 6. Carter actually succeeds in inserting the nuclear fuel canister into the waste dome core, but it becomes conveniently jammed part way down the chute and will be have to be removed at a later date. The Time Fighters by Michael Butterworth. Novelization of Space Warp, Dorzak, Devil's Planet, and The Seance Spectre. Major plot adjustments abound in this novel. The most noticeable alteration is the blending of Devil's Planet with The Seance Spectre. With both stories occurring simultaneously and replacing Koenig with Verdesky in the latter story. Butterworth continues his use of very alien creatures in Space Warp, with the first rampaging Maya monster described as a 10 foot high, iridescent scaled centaur like being. Changes made include 1. Maya's illness is a normal psychon condition caused by a periodic imbalance of their super intelligent minds. 2. The Croton spaceship is damaged after it. 2. Traverses the Space Warp, causing Sahala to seek help on Alpha. 3. Koenig's absence from Dorzak on is explained as a long-range reconnaissance mission to the solar system the Moon is approaching. 
Among its numerous members are the planet Elna and its habitable moon Entra and the protoplanet Tora, with which the moon will collide on its present trajectory. It is suggested that the local fabric of the universe was disturbed by the moon's passage through the space warp and the collision with Tora is the ultimate result of this bad karma. 4. Koenig's crash on Entra goes unnoticed by the senior staff as this is the moment that Sandor as Greg Sanderson was originally known in the script and his many mutineers more than three choose to storm command center and brutalize the staff into submission. No rescue eagle is dispatched and Koenig is presumed missing during the collision crisis. 5. Sandor and his cronies are depicted as a bunch of malcontents rather than suffering from a psychological condition. They are no longer exterior workers, but ordinary Alphans. 6. Verdesky is in command of Alpha during the Torah incident. He orders the detonation of the nuclear waste site and the evacuation of Alpha, personally performs the procedure to blow up the atomic waste and dispatches the maniacal Sandor before Koenig is rescued from Elna. The Edge of the Infinite by Michael Butterworth. Novelization of All That Glisters. Journey to Where. The Dorson. And The Immunity Syndrome. The final novel in the series. Butterworth adds an ominous interlinking plotline, the moon is approaching the edge of the galaxy it is presently traveling across and the Alphans are desperately gathering and hoarding supplies to survive the journey through the intergalactic void for as long as possible. Helena's opening status report gives the date as 25 December 2005. Changes to established plotlines include, 1 the initial, neutron. Transmission from Texas City is received on Alpha while Koenig and company are away battling the sentient rocks in the All That Glisters segment. Neutron is the term used in an earlier draft of the Journey to Where script. 2. The rock's death color, Red is Death, is black and it sends off opaque beams of blackness, which instantly dehydrate any living matter they touch. 3. The Alphans are initially horrified at the prospect of living on the sterile and polluted Earth as revealed by Dr. Logan and Carla. 4. 4. The Dawson. Butterworth adapted an earlier draft script, Return of the Dawson, with many minor differences in plot and dialogue. 5. The leader of the Alphan Planetary Survey team is a pioneer officer named Yuri Salkov, not Jerry Travis. 6. The Immunity Syndrome ends with the I that am I entity taking its own life. It could not stand the guilt of its murdering the beings it had encountered regardless of intention. The Alphans then seriously entertain the notion of relocating to the planet and the series ends with an optimistic note. This final installment was never released in the UK and only in a limited distribution in the US. The Tabor is the only Year 2 episode not included in this series of novelizations. Since Michael Butterworth adapted his novelizations primarily from early drafts of Year 2 scripts, many of the character names and personalities are considerably different from the later aired versions. Topic. Foreign language releases Space, 1999 novels and novelizations were also written in other languages for specific markets, mainly Germany and Italy, where the series was highly popular. In Italy, adaptations of all 24 Year 1 episodes and 8 of the Year 2 episodes were published in oversized hardback volumes. These books typically contained two episodes and nearly 100 color photos each. Like the Michael Butterworth English language editions, many of these books were adapted from early drafts of scripts, and events and details sometimes differ significantly from the episodes later aired. In Germany, the Butterworth Year 2 novels were translated into German, with one significant difference. The ending of The Edge of the Infinite was altered in order to set up events that would be continued in six original follow-on novels. The first two novels in the series were translated and published in Japan by Mikasa Shobo. Das Andromeda Ratzel, literally the Andromeda Riddle, by H. W. Springer, pseudonym of Hans Wolf Sommer. Das Erbe der Roboter, literally the Robot's Heritage, by H. W. Springer. Die Jürgen von Luna, literally the Eternals of Luna, by H. W. Springer. Invasion der Esper, literally Invasion of the Espers, by H. W. Springer. Action Exodus, analogously Operation Exodus, by Kurt Brand. Der Style Planet, literally The Steel Planet, by M. F. Thomas' final novel, Der Style Planet, is notable in that it concludes the Space 1999 Odyssey by having the Alphans teleport to Texas City, Earth via the neutrino transmission process introduced in Journey to Where. Topic: Two Thousands Novels and Novelizations. In 2002, Fanderson published a new edition of the novel Earthfall which corrected the typographic errors of the original publication and, with the permission of the author, separated the novel into its three component sections, Part 1, Breakaway, 
Set in September 1999, Part 2, Colony Alpha, January 2000, and Part 3, Earthfall, October 2018. Fanderson went on to publish a new original novel, Earthbound, written by E. C. Tubb, in 2003. This book contained an adaptation of Earthbound, the one episode which was not included in the original novelization run, as well as adaptations of two scripts of Year Two stories which retained the Year One format in which the scripts had originally been written, The Exiles, and The Face of Eden, or The Immunity Syndrome. Also in 2002, Eagle One Media published a new edition of the novel Alien Seed with a new preface by Tubb. The same year, Poes Media launched a new series of officially licensed original novels and related works of nonfiction, and revised and expanded omnibus editions of previously issued novelizations for year two. All books are English language releases, available directly from the company's websites. Topic: <laughs> Fanderson releases. Earthfall by E. C. Tubb, original novel. Earthbound by E. C. Tub, afterward by Chris Bentley, novelization. Topic: <inaudible> Eagle One Media releases. Alien Seed by E. C. Tub, preface by the author, original novel. Topic: <inaudible> Poes Media releases. Resurrection by William Latham, foreword by Johnny Byrne, original novel, 2002. A sequel to End of Eternity, in the Year One format. The Forsaken by John Kenneth Muir, foreword by Prentice Hancock, original novel, 2003. Reprinted in a revised edition on January 23, 2013. An original novel placed between Years One and Two. Paul Morrow and Tanya Alexander are written out of the series. Survival by Brian Ball, foreword by Barry Morse, original novel, 2005. An original novel, placed between years one and two, that depicts the fate of Professor Victor Bergman. Eternity Unbound by William Latham, afterward by the author, original novel, 2005. A Balor trilogy. Part one depicts the events on Progron 1000 years before the present, while part two is a script to prose adaption of End of Eternity, and part three is a revised reprint of Latham's novel Resurrection. Year Two by Michael Butterworth, foreword by the author, afterward by Matteo Latosa, novelization omnibus, 2005. A reissue of the six Butterworth novelizations published in the 1970s. The stories are now placed in production order and have been slightly rewritten to conform more to their broadcast versions where necessary. The Tabor is finally adapted and inserted into the narrative. New material is introduced to link the stories together and give them some continuity not only with Year One, but with the range of published and forthcoming Poe Space, 1999 novels. Shepherd Moon by various authors, foreword by Matteo Latosa an anthology, January 2010. Born for Adversity by David A. McEntee, foreword and afterword by Catherine Schell original novel, February 2010. Set in Year Three. Omega by William Latham, foreword by Christopher Penfold, original novel, March 2010. Set in Year 3. Alpha by William Latham, afterword by Christopher Penfold, original novel, March 2010. Set in Year 3. Android Planet by John Rankin, foreword by John Mason, revised reissue of original novel, the 3rd of February 2011. Set in Year 1. Phoenix of Megaron by John Rankin, foreword by John Mason, revised reissue of original novel, September 14, 2012. Set in Year One. Johnny Burns' Children of the Gods by William Latham, foreword by Sandy Byrne, afterword by William Latham, original novel, January 23, 2013. Set in Year Three. The Whispering Sea by John Kenneth Muir, foreword by David Hirsch, original novel, February 2014. Set in Year Two. The Final Revolution by William Latham, foreword by Barbara Bain, original novel, July 2015. Set in Year Three. Topic: <laughs> Future Poets Media Releases. Black Doves by Eleanor Cambio, foreword by Nick Tate, original novel, date TBA. Eternity Unleashed by William Latham, original novel, date TBA. Year One by Brian Ball, John Rankin, and E.C. Tub, forewords by all three authors hardcover novelization omnibus, date TBA. Prodigal Moon by various authors anthology, date TBA. Odysseus Wept by William Latham original novel, date TBA. <laughs> 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 
Topic: Non-fiction releases. Topic: The Making of Space, 1999. In 1976, Ballantine Books published a paperback behind-the-scenes guide, The Making of Space, 1999, by Tim Hield. It focuses mainly on the early months of production of Year Two. The episode guide for that season is incomplete, since the book was published while Year Two was still airing. It features an extensive photo section with more than 50 black and white photos. Topic: The Moonbase Alpha Technical Notebook. In 1977, Starlog magazine published the Moonbase Alpha Technical Notebook. It provides detailed blueprints of Moonbase Alpha, along with illustrations and information on various incarnations of props and costumes. It was intended to be updated on a regular basis, but this idea was abandoned due to low sales. Starlog had released the blueprints of the Eagle Transporter in its seventh issue dated August 1977 as a possible preview of the Moonbase Alpha Technical Notebook, which was first advertised in the ninth issue. Starlog also released blueprints of the Mark 9 Hawk in issue 32, March 1980, but these were not intended as an update to the Moonbase Alpha Technical Notebook. Topic UFO and Space 1999 by Chris Drake, overview and episode summaries. Boxtree, London, 1994. Topic Cosmos 1999, La Popie de la Blanche. By Pierre Fagiol, a socio-cultural analysis of the series, in French. DLM Editions, Paris, 1996. Topic Exploring Space, 1999 In 1997, McFarlane and Company released a non-fiction, scholarly monograph of space, 1999 by John Kenneth Muir, titled Exploring Space, 1999, an episode guide and complete history of the mid-1970s science fiction television series. It was re-released in paperback by McFarland in April 2005. Topic. Destination, Moonbase Alpha In 2010, Telos Publishing released the most comprehensive non-fiction book published on the subject of space, 1999. Written by Robert E. Wood and titled Destination, Moonbase Alpha, The Unofficial and Unauthorized Guide to Space, 1999, the book runs to 490 pages and contains a color photo section featuring model spaceships created for space, 1999 by special effects technician Martin Bauer, as well as a foreword by Xenia Merton Sandra Benes, and an afterword by Barry Morse Professor Victor Bergman. Topic. Chasing the Cyclops William Latham, author of Space, 1999 Omega and its sequel Space, 1999 Alpha, wrote a nonfiction book that detailed the conception, planning, and writing processes that went into the writing of the two novels. It contains a foreword written by Matteo Latoza, the publisher at Poes Media, a small independent publishing company that published officially licensed novels and other works in the Space, 1999 series. Poes Media. February 2011. Topic: Space 1999, the Powersverse Compendium. Patricia Sokol's detailed analysis of the novels, short stories, and audio books in the Space 1999 series published by Poes Media. It contains a detailed synopsis of each of the works, a timeline, and an encyclopedic section of all the persons, places, and things in the expanded Space 1999 universe, meaning the original series and the officially licensed works published by Poes Media. It features a foreword by Xenia Merton Sandra Benes, and an afterword by Martin Willey. Poes Media. February, 2012. <laughs> Cosmos 1999, Le Fabulaire de l'Espace Didier Lyadet's analysis and commentary, in French, edition YRIs, September 2014. Topic. Space, 1999 episode by episode Petter Oglin's edit of the 1997–98 analysis and commentary by Online Alpha Lulu Press, November 2014. Topic. Destinazione obbligata, Alpha Giuseppe Turdo's overview and episode analysis, in Italian Lulu Press, April 2015. 
Topic: <laughs> Space 1999 the 40th anniversary celebration. John K. Balor's edit of the 2013 to 15 episode by episode analysis and commentary by Online Alpha, Lulu Press, September 2015. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Comic books. In the 1970s, U.S. publisher Charlton Comics released seven issues of a comic based on space, 1999, as well as eight issues of a black-and-white illustrated magazine featuring more adult-orientated stories. In Germany, publisher Choral Verlag produced 18 adaptations of Year One episodes as part of their Zack Color comic anthologies, one adaptation and four original stories in their Zack Parade line, as well as two full-length graphic novel original adventures in their Zack Box imprint. Many of the episodic adaptations were later translated and reprinted in Italy. In the UK, a two-page comic strip appeared in Look in Children's magazine from autumn 1975 to spring 1977. Writer Angus Allen had previously contributed to a number of other Jerry Anderson-based strips in the 1960s for TV Century 21 comic. John M. Burns illustrated the first three stories, to be succeeded by Mike Noble when the strip would convert to black and white in early 1976. In the autumn of 1976, the strip adopted the Year 2 format, with Burns returning for a brief coda story that November. Some of these strips were reprinted in black and white as complete compilations in the Portuguese TV Junior comic. In 2013, a rebooted and elaborated new graphic novel appeared, entitled Aftershock and Awe. In this context, the events of Space 1999 occur in an alternate history. In this timeline, John Fitzgerald Kennedy was never assassinated, and the space race continued apace. In 1987, a third world war broke out, between the United States and North Korea, causing widespread devastation, but limited harm, given that international expenditure on the space race diminished the intensity of the escalated nuclear arms race in our world's Cold War during the 80s. Ronald Reagan and Kim Jong-il are forced to resign their presidential offices after the catastrophe. On September 13, 1999, the Moon is blown out of Earth orbit by an intense nuclear accident and into a space warp. The series will also carry on the narrative into a third season. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Audio dramas. In the 1970s, Power Records produced seven child-oriented audio dramas based on Space 1999, most of which on Year One episodes: Breakaway, Death's Other Dominion, and Mission of the Darians were released on a single 33 revolutions per minute LP, while a second album contains End of Eternity and Dragon's Domain, accompanied by the two original adventures Return to the Beginning, in which, after the moon passes through a violent space storm, the Alphans discover that they have returned to Earth, arriving on the surface, however, Koenig and company find themselves in biblical times, they encounter Noah and witness the flood, and it played so softly on the ear in which a strange tune leads the Alphans to a habitable planet, where solar flares have placed the population in suspended animation. Two remaining conscious scientists, who can reverse the process with blood transfusions, abduct the Alphans to serve as donors. In addition, Power Records published individual comic, Book and Record, editions of Breakaway, and Return to the Beginning, with 45 revolutions per minute vinyl records enclosed. Topic. Poes Media releases Resurrection, an audiobook by William Latham, read by Barry Morse, 7 May 2010. Amidst the foreword from the original publication. Spider's Web, an audiobook by William Latham, read by Rupert Booth, 8 November 2010. See also List of television series made into books